look at Google or Amazon and say, well, they're just going to do this, so I shouldn't even do it. Well, if people thought like that, Ring would never have been created, and that dude would have never sold his company for a billion dollars. <laughs> Don't fear the competitors. for the morning just ended and we are now unfortunately having to go and get a new charger for our MacBooks because it started smoking on Josh. Move it! Okay, procedure, oh procedure! Say bandit! I wish we would have got that on tape, but he was at a meeting and I guess it started smoking. Yeah, it's... the charger literally just, I don't know if it was like burning or something, but smoke was coming out and I was like, holy. I've had it since my days at Full Sail, and I've had tape on it, like electrical tape. So it's just a matter of time before it actually bit the dust. So it, we got to get a new one. Yeah, it just hit its, its, it ran its span of life, and it's done well. We got that. We got our use out of it. <laughs> How's it look? Still gonna order mine off AppleDog.com. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, cause you gotta customize it a little bit, huh? Needs to be like souped up. Yeah. Are you guys team Windows, PC, garbage, or Apple? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. <laughs> yes, and I'm not referring to phones. I'm talking about computers. Yes. To literally be part of the team that gets to make these. I know, and design them. Yes. I forgot they are. Go through the door. Ready? Ready. Let me in. <laughs> 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 So that smart home device, they actually originally appeared on Shark Tank called Ring, and now they sold for a billion dollars to Amazon. That was a little while ago, but yeah. <laughs> it also just shows, think about Ring and how they're competing with everybody else. Now they kind of went after the front door, but it's still smart home devices. A lot of people would look at Google or Amazon and say, well, they're just going to do this, so I shouldn't even do it. Well, if people thought like that, Ring would never have been created, and that dude would have never sold his company for a billion dollars. <laughs> Don't fear the competitors. I am actually about to jump on and do a podcast for Talk, what is it? Talk Digital to me? Oh, yeah, Talk Digital to me podcast. Uh, they're going to interview me on my background in tech and being an influencer in the tech space and things like that. Hey everybody, so today's vlog, we are going to be talking to you guys about all the things that we wish we knew when we first started out programming. So hopefully there are things that we know now that <laughs> we wish we knew back then. One of the biggest things that I wish I knew when I was first starting out programming was that don't be in a rush to learn everything. So oftentimes we are bombarded with new frameworks, new libraries, things that are gonna make your job a hundred times faster and better. And we put this pressure on ourselves to you know, keep learning and learning and learning 
when we're not actually really focusing on one thing. And I wish when I was first starting out, the school that I went to, they taught us every single month we would switch topics. So we would go from JavaScript to PHP, to SQL, to JavaScript, to Angular, to React Native, like all these different things, boom, 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 which is great because, you know, it, it opens you and it, it exposes you to all sorts of different things you can kind of pick and choose. So I get that point, but I do wish that I would have known early on to maybe have spent the majority of my time working just in JavaScript in my spare time instead of jumping from like Laravel to all these other like frameworks that I've never actually used and I would have just focused on just JavaScript in all my free time instead of hopping from all these different languages and frameworks. <music> random thing that I know now but I didn't know then don't drink energy drinks because they're horrible for you that was like a big thing a few years ago and it probably still is in the coding community like not sleep and drink energy drinks I know Josh and I used to do it don't do that if you're just starting out stick to your teas you know coffee limit your coffee intake don't have a lot of it no! you'll thank me later just got back from a run and I just sat back down at my computer to check something and then go back downstairs to help Josh with dinner. But look what was at my desk, you guys. All these beautiful flowers. It's basically a love note from my husband, from this guy. And that handsome man. Aren't they pretty? And it's not even Valentine's Day. I'm so blessed. But, oops, let me grab my little thingy. And let's go downstairs and help Josh with dinner. Is in somebody's backyard. Yeah, those flowers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the pink one. All the other ones were like wild bushes. But the big pink one was definitely somebody's bush. <laughs> <laughs> right, you guys, so we are making quinoa. And this is shrimp stock. It was actually boiled from shrimp. We have a neighbor who always cooks delicious things and he brought that over for us. He actually boiled all this delicious shrimp in there and then kept the stock. So we are making this dish. There's cucumbers, onions, garlic, mozzarella, mozzarella tomatoes. Tomatoes. It's going to have quinoa, all sorts of good stuff. Burning. All right, one thing, it's not that I wish I knew. I actually, somebody told me this and I'm really happy, which is when you're first starting out programming, you have to just embrace partial knowledge. And what that means is there's gonna be so much you don't understand and you're gonna only understand pieces of it. Don't let that discourage you. Don't let that d d deter you. Just keep moving forward. The gaps will fill out. Partial knowledge is okay in the beginning. One of the most important things that I have learned that it is and that I wish I knew when I was first starting out is that it doesn't matter so much about the language or the framework that you're learning. It's the ability to problem solve. So if you can practice or spend your time figuring out actual problem solving techniques, looking for patterns, that's what programming is about. The languages and all that, you know, stuff, it comes, but it's really all about problem solving. If you can master that skill, you'll be able to master any language. And this really Really comes into play when you become an experienced developer and you're actually writing code and you're actually building applications if that makes sense so if you are somebody that is teaching yourself or going through online tutorials which is great I always recommend do online tutorials those are super helpful and those are going to give you the basic syntax for learning whatever language or framework you're trying to get into they have a tendency of really holding your hand through writing the actual application you're not actually problem solving for anything doing those tutorials. So what I always say to people, you can listen to any of my other vlogs, is when you are doing these tutorials, when you really start to learn stuff is when you quit doing them and you take the knowledge that you learned and you apply it to another application. So I always say build onto it. Look for the patterns that you're using when you're building in these tutorials because there's always going to be patterns. Take that same pattern and apply and apply it to another problem that you could build off of. Does that make sense? So let's say you are doing a simple to-do app. That's literally almost every tutorial out there is a simple adding like a grocery list. Well, what is that really? That's a CRUD app. Apply that same knowledge to something else, a user login, whatever it is, but you actually do the problem solving to build that part of the application yourself. This is something that a lot of people ask me 
on Instagram actually. They'll be like, I have no idea what to build. I don't know how to teach myself. I don't know how to create a curriculum. You know, I don't know what I should be learning. And they actually are doing a great job reaching out to other people in the community because they have been there. They know what you're going through. And I really wish I would have reached out to more people. I got really lucky because I met Josh early on and he sort of guided me and was like, hey, learn React, learn this, learn that. And that really, you know, sort of like streamlined my process to learning what I needed to to learn in order to get a job and that was so helpful and I wish I would have done that earlier on in my career um, when I was first in school to really like latch on and reach out to other community members to find out what it was that I really needed to know in order to get a job. Another thing that a lot of people talk about is, you know, what IDE do you use? What are the best coding tools? You know, all those types of things. In reality, it does not matter what IDE you use. I mean, it does to a degree if you're using, so something I learned, I used to use Atom when I was, not when I was first starting out, but in school, that was like the new thing. And when I got onto the real world, I realized that Atom actually does not handle large projects. It crashes on you. So then I switched to VS Code, that type of thing. But it really does not matter. It's really a preference thing. And obviously, depending on what language you, you're using, because you can use language-based IDEs. The biggest thing, this goes back to something I said previously, which is learning how to problem solve. The IDEs and all the tools that you get, I mean, yeah, they can help you, but at the end of the day, if you're really not grasping on to what it is that you're learning, um, you shouldn't be focusing on the tools. And that's something when I was starting out, I was like, ooh, I'm using Brackets, I'm using Atom, I'm using PyCharm, I'm using, you know, all these different things. But in reality, I need, I should have been focusing on the actual problem solving ability because I probably would have done better in some of my classes. And that's something that a lot of people can get overwhelmed with because there's a lot of freaking tools out there. There's a lot of NPM packages. There is so many things out there that can, you know, bog you down or fog your brain that at the end of the day, just push those aside and don't worry about them. Really, really focus on problem solving and practicing problem solving. All right, this is the end result, you guys. It's a whole lot of protein sitting in there. So, we are gonna have our dinner. Time to eat. It almost looks like I'm balding with this. <laughs> it's like, it's like a bald cap or a like skull a, cap or yeah. what's called. He's not bald, then you guys. He has a thick head of hair. Got a thick mane. All right. One thing I wish I would have known when I was starting to learn how to program is I took the approach of reading every book I could get my hand on. And so I would read book after book after book, and then I would go to actually write the code or write the project or whatever I had in my head, I wouldn't know how to do it. And so what I would say is one of the best ways to learn, and I wish I knew this, was just to pick a technology, pick a project. It can be a simple to-do app. It could be a little social page. It can be whatever, a grocery list. It can be anything you want it to be, and then just start building it. Again, you might barely have the understanding. Copy and paste off Stack Overflow. Copy and paste from similar projects off GitHub. Just do everything you can, as soon as you can, to start building in the technology, because that is gonna solidify the principles, the structure, and how to actually do something, the libraries to use, everything that goes in actually building something, that's what's gonna solidify the principles and the knowledge in your head. As soon as you can, just start building. Even if you don't fully understand it yet, even if you feel like there's so many gaps in your knowledge, just start and Google how you do it and fill in the gaps that way. Highly recommended. Wish I would have known that early on. So, hope that helps. All right, you guys. Those are our quick little things we wish we knew slash lessons <laughs> learned. Right now. Lesson learned. Don't grow out your hair. I'm just <laughs> if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make Hope it sure, was yeah, make sure to share this with other people, especially people that are just starting out that may be feeling frustrated or discouraged because we've all been there. Yeah, seriously, especially when it comes to learning development. Mm -hmm. So make sure to subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Mm -hmm.